Listen. Is Long Legs the scariest movie of the year? Maybe. Is it the scariest movie of the decade or ever, like the market is saying? Nope. The marketing for this movie has been blown out of proportion. The hype has been way too real. And I gotta say bravo to the marketing team. Cut them all a check. Good. Cut the check, cut the check, cut the check. While this movie might not meet everybody's lofty expectation, is there something that sets it apart? Is it still worth a watch to go see at the theater? Let's talk about it. FBI agent Lee Hark is a gifted recruit assigned to the unsolved case of an elusive serial killer. As the case takes a complex turn, unearthing evidence of the occult, Harker discovers a personal connection to the ruthless killer and must race against time to stop him before he claims the lives of another innocent family. Director Odds Perkins is a filmmaker that I'm not familiar with at all, but I'm super excited to check out more of his stuff after watching this film. Oh yeah, an apology, I wasn't really familiar with your game. He's the son of Anthony Perkins, the OG Norman Bates, and also this guy from Legally Blonde. It's clear that he's stepping right in the right direction, in the right realm that his father did, because he's holding this tension, building it throughout the film, and you can feel it that it's just permeating throughout the movie. And while this movie's not traditionally scary, I actually, there's no jump scares. It's not like you need a bunch of loud noises and all those traditional things that maybe people are looking forward here to see. It's not even a bunch of like super gory or scary scenes where you think that someone's gonna pop out of the dark. The movie is still intense in a way where it's very creepy, very eerie. There was a weight on my body watching this film that felt sinister, felt like it was crawling under my skin. It felt very uneasy, most of the film, probably 90% of it. And it was a unique feeling that I haven't felt all year. And I say 90% of the film because surprisingly, there's some levity in the film. It's kind of dark comedy here, some not dark comedy. And I was surprised I was able to even get a smirk or a laugh even a little bit throughout this film. It's not straight up comedy but there's moments that will make you you know bust a smirk and it's just to disarm you so you not prepared for what's to come next michael monroe who i'm a big fan of is a coming a staple in the horror genre with performances in it follows the watcher and also significant other and i think that this may be her best performance yet she does such a great job playing this character her portrayal of this character lee harker uh, throughout this film, if it, this movie was set in 2024, people would probably assume that she was on the spectrum, maybe have autism because the way that the character moves and acts. And I think that the way she plays the character was very commendable. It was nuanced. There's so many little different things if you're paying attention that they, she brings to the character throughout the movie. She very, very effectively conveys this character's unique frequency. And I want to say frequency because she feels like she's playing on a different frequency than everyone else in the film. And this is highlighted by her boss, Blair Underwood, who by my, I have to say, does not age. Black don't crack. He feels like a regular person, feels like a regular human being that you'll see walking around in the street compared to her. So it really shows the difference between what she's going through in her experience and how she processes things versus someone like us <laughs> who's watching her trying to understand what's going on through her head. It feels kind of like an eerie supernatural film and that combination and inspiration comes from movies like Silence of the Lambs, Zodiac, Seven, and where you know you're trying to find the serial killers just back and forth. Obviously, Silence Slam is a big inspiration because Lee Harker is a female FBI agent searching for like this almost omnipotent serial killer. What this movie sets it apart from those films and what makes it different from a lot of the copycats of those films that we got over the years is the fact that it has this dreamlike feel. Think of movies like The Cure or Insomnia where it feels ethereal. It feels like you're in a waking nightmare at all times. The way Perkins, Oz Perkins, the director, centers his characters in every single shot. So everything else is kind of in the background. It's and you, it's like a very detached feeling as well. Kind of a fishbowl lens feel without it feeling too like circly. feels voyeuristic. It feels like you're detached from the character and you're, you're viewing them in their experience, which also makes you feel like long legs is always somewhere around and you're, you're viewing these characters through their eyes which is kind of chilling so while you're watching the film you're kind of scanning the screen because the camera is so tight on the character or what they're doing you're expecting something to come you're expecting something to go in the background and sometimes when you get settled into it 
nothing's happening and then boom like there you see something like, oh what was that and it builds and builds throughout the film and what is long legs well it's a serial killer played by nick cage who gives another wonderfully wacky unhinged performance in this film i think that his performance in the movie will make or break this movie for a lot of people and it's why i see a lot of divisive reviews i see some people praising it so high some people saying it's not that good because i think nick cage is wacky enough where you, it, like, okay, this is Nick Cage, but he's tame enough where he doesn't totally throw the movie off. And the look, the feel, and everything that c comes with this character is terrifying. He is so crazy throughout the movie, and he had a real ownership on the role, so he created this in a way that feels like other serial killers, but just supernatural at the same time. It was really, really interesting to watch him perform, and while sometimes he did make me laugh, maybe intentionally maybe unintentionally the scenes where he was being serious also terrified me on top of uh, oz's direction the great performances in the feel of the film first time cinematographer andres orochi i'm not sure if i'm saying that name correctly hopefully i am does a great job of shooting this on film using that natural light that's there and how film looks with the darkness and shades and how everything is just dark and eerie and the way they use shadows and things like that to exemplify each scene especially certain scenes outside is amazing it makes you feel like there's creepy crawlies <laughs> in every single corner of the movie and it helps that intense weighted feeling that you're feeling and i gotta say the person who did i couldn't find their name the score for the film did a phenomenal job as well it's so intrusive to the point where i thought i was hearing the sounds within the theater there was like a baby cry in the the actual movie and i thought somebody brought a baby to this scary ass film or a uh, creepy ass film and it was something that was in the film that's how good the sound design and the score is the movie has a unique feel, unique performances, uh, a unique sound design, and what holds this movie back from me to matching the hype that this movie has been building with all the marketing, everything, that the early reactions, is that the first two thirds of the film is super engaging, you're interested in the mystery, you're interested in the characters, you're interested in what's going on with this character long legs as he's sprinkled throughout the film, but the third act and the resolution it feels kind of rushed a bit and there's stuff that's left unexplained which is fine because i think there's enough explained where you don't feel lost but and some stuff that you kind of just have to research on your own and if you don't like doing that and you want all your answers in the movie that will turn you off but i think there was things that was just missing within the plot that could have helped this movie not only visually but also story-wise to elevate it. While that third act doesn't uh, overall ruin the experience for me, and I don't think it'll ruin the experience for many people because they stick the landing, but I think the landing is more of a like a slow pitter patter on the in the feet kind of pitter pattering on the ground than like an impactful land that kicks you in the face and makes a crater on the floor. And I gotta say, when the movie ended, I, I said to myself within myself like, that's it at first, because I, I had all the hype in my head from the movie or with the lead up to the movie, but as I sat on it, removed my expectations and just took in what the film was telling me, was giving me, I liked the movie more because it kept sitting on me. I'm still thinking about it right now, different moments throughout the film and different things that it implies and the implications. And I think that the, the longer you sit on the movie, the more the movie will work out for you. I think that initial reaction could be uh, negative, but it also might be very positive depending on who you are. So with that said, I really liked Long Legs. I think it's a great film. Is it the best move, horror movie of the decade? I don't think so. But I think it's a movie that's along the lines of Hereditary, but just missing a little bit of some of the plot details to elevate it to like a Hereditary status. So I'm gonna give this movie a B. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate Long Legs? How did, how did you enjoy the film? What do you think of Nick Cage's performance? And were you a fan of Michael Monroe's portrayal as Lee Harker? Drop all those comments down below and let me know. Like the video if you like my review. Attack that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified of my reviews, reactions, live discussions, and much, much more. You can watch more content right now.